Hello and welcome to another edition of the Eternal Journey. I'm Our Resolves and this is a slightly updated version of the Glozu Ramp deck that made it to the top 8 this weekend and was also just the sweetest deck in the tournament to be honest. I've made a couple of changes here, well it's just 5 cards in total. I've uh, gone down on the Find the Way and just added an additional Power Stone and I've just made a straight swap of Seek Power for Petition because I do think that Petition is one of the more underrated cards from Fall of Argent Point. It's got a really powerful effect and much in a similar way to Find the way this will often find you two power because you are just going to pick up a crest for it, play the crest, and the crest will help you to find that additional power for having to spend the additional power to get there. And with this being a factionless spell, this works really well in our deck because although we do have the 12 crests, which are going to help us, and we do have pretty nice influence requirements, it's just like double, double, uh, double of everything. Uh, but that's sort of easy to do, especially when you have things like Minotaur Ambassador in the deck, and uh, just all these crests. But I did find myself a couple of times where it'd be like, I don't know, um, Crest of Order plus Primal Sigil, and then uh, I find the way. And sure, as soon as you do find that um, one time source, you are quick in the gas, but just being able to find your power without any real trouble is just really nice. I do like the Petition spell. As in the late game, it could just be like two power Scout one, which is still sort of reasonable in a deck like this because of how powerful our heavy hitters are. Now the deck is basically unitless, um, because we do have a few here, uh, but they're all just for different things, like Scorpion Wasp is just a removal spell for a carrier, Winchest Merchant is just a tutor, and Minotaur Ambassador is just like a necessary evil, like against the beatdown decks, this is just a really nice body, just being a 3-5, you've seen decks I've played before in this sort of archetype that I really like Minotaur Ambassador, as well as getting you from like from 6 to 8, and just like because you can hold up the two as well, like you can also play the Power Stone on that turn, or you can play Petition to grab a, a Scout Land for the next turn, but yeah, this deck is sweet, and the market is something else. Uh, there's two cards that I'm sort of questioning, like the Vision of Austerity, of course, it is a powerful card. Um, I've been hit with Teacher in this deck, but then I just like ignored it because I just played a new tomorrow and was just like, okay, whatever, got me. <laughs> My 10 cost spell cost 13, but now for the rest of the game, I've got like 23 power in play and just like, don't care that I have to pay more. It's perfectly fine. Uh, but yeah, of course, that's probably like a necessary evil. Because in the games where you're struggling and you're not getting to ramp that hard, uh, you probably do want to kill that. Uh, I've also got the Sword of Sky King, which is probably just like a gain eight, and then a way to perhaps win the control mirrors like through harsh rules and that sort of thing. But to be honest, I found just being able to grind opponents like that out, just like resolve at aid of the hero of the hero and just like kill them over a couple of turns. But the rest of it is like this is the power of markets, and it's not just about finding those like potential sideboard cards, it's about I've got a new tomorrow in my deck now, but I'm never going to draw a new tomorrow until it's good. Like, of course the market's not perfect, so we can't just like put all four Aid of the Heroes. Like, the perfect market would be four Aid of the Hero, like one a new tomorrow. But, you know, we've got a single card limit here, so just put a new tomorrow in there, fetch it when we're ready, play it out, and let me tell you, I have never lost a game where I've resolved a new tomorrow, because this card is not only like plus 10 mana, but in this uh, composition of power, it's like plus 10 power, plus 5 scries, and then like the next turn, you're just going to play like, I don't know, Aid of the Hero, draw 4 cards and your opponent's just dead. Like, there's nothing they can do about it. Uh, this deck's sweet. I've probably spent like half an hour talking about how good this deck is, but let's go into the ladder and watch me get destroyed in every single match just to make me sound like a liar. But let's get onto it. Okay, and here we are on the draw, which is sort of a place we do want to be at. Uh, unfortunately, I think this hand's a little bit too slow. Uh, it's probably too fine because if we're against some aggressive, we've got like free drop blocker into four drop blocker into like harsh real, but I think we could just do better. So let's uh, redraw this. And these are the sort of decks that I do like because I can have a bit of fun with them. Like really hard control decks, it just feels like you just get to like, don't matter what you do, you're just going to draw our own off cards eventually. Uh, going to throw out the Crest of Order. If we do draw like a Power Stone, um, I'm going to keep this Permafrost just because we could be playing against a Teacher. Uh, but because we've already got like the time sigil in hand, it doesn't really matter. Because if we did have a power stone on top, then oh wow, are we against the combo deck here? I'm not sure we can actually win that match. Uh, well, because we're just going to petition here, just grab some more scouting. And yeah, I like Crest of Order. Once we've got like double of everything, it doesn't really matter what we get. And later on, the petitions can just fetch basics. Well. I don't think we can beat this. We need to find a... Yeah, Desert Marshal doesn't do it. 
rats. <laughs> Is there anything on board that can actually deal with this? No. So what we need to do is hope that our opponent is not on that deck and just hope for the best. Uh, harsh will opponent not going to do anything there. I've already got like two sweepers. From what I remember when I played this deck, it is... Oh, fine. Flip for that. <laughs> Momentum Mario. Okay. Feeling good. It's fine. We're not playing against that combo deck. We don't need to panic. Well, I was going to keep playing Crests. Uh, opponent's not attacking for some reason. Um, so I've got six here. This petition gets us a Crest next turn. Yeah, I think I'll keep it. Well, at least you just don't need to do anything here. Second Merchant makes me feel like... Okay, next attraction is fine. Our opponent came here to have some fun. That's okay. I can deal with fun. This uh, wild combo deck that can kill... Uninteractive decks like mine that we're in trouble with. But yeah, take one, it's fine. Uh, position, I guess. Grab. Because the progress, just keep cresting it up. Try and find like a proper ramp spell, so. Bin that. Fine, to take five, five points, please. Next track in next turn. Probably just gonna ref. I think I've three cards in hand, so this can't be the combo deck. This just has to be something sweet, like Local Pojo's just done a stream or something. What are they up to? Like, if this is like the merchant combo deck, then the Justice Merchant doesn't get anything that we'll worry about. Well, oh, Pale Storm's great. <laughs> Just do that, I guess. Let's run fast spell. So now, do we merchant for something here? And we're quite a way away from actually. Pitching down the a new tomorrow because a new tomorrow is generally what you want to grab first. After you resolve a new tomorrow, you, you'll find a win condition because you're just going to get five scouts. Um, our point is going deep here. I like the cut of your jib, friend. I might have to like, add them after this and find out what this deck is or where they've got it from. But. Oh! So they're flicking. The merchant. Are they just flicking the same next attraction in and out? That is a way to draw a card. <laughs> yeah, I like the cut your jib. Um, let's just put frost this because it's nonsense. And I think we will have the two harsh rules here just because we can pull this like. No, we don't need to play anything. I would take free here probably, but it's fine. Probably like casual next turn, just because I get a bit of a clock on here, because now we're taking five. But I do have a little something like a. I'm dead to that. Um, what does Crest of Progress find us? Wisdom Elders? Great, okay, so we'll be able to find it. Uh, so let's switch this Great Parliament out for a new tomorrow. Uh, then we'll just play Great Parliament out. Got like a bunch of blockers here. Um, the Wisdom should be able to find us like the way to get to 10 power, then when we're at 10 power we'll get to 20 and then it's probably unlikely we're to lose from there. Also I feel so much more comfortable making videos now that I know that people can't actually do rank. Like the, sometimes you feel a little bit bad when you're playing as like a D1 like end of the uh... My part's going deep. <laughs> I was just going to get it for 10 and then wipe the board, I guess. Leaves our problem with Afri free, but we can't leave this to survive. So let's just. Ah, sure, here. Could use the permafrost to kill the free free, but it's fine. We'll sweep this up like with whatever else I play. But I do like the cut of our opponent's chip here. There, I've kept some on top. Oh. Well, that's Pile Stone. Um, all this Perfrost is just so we don't take another free because we do have to take a turn off to play new tomorrow. Uh, we don't have any uh, Waste Stones in the deck, so we're not going to do anything like just gain two free life off it. But our opponent's getting some value off this next attraction and just like in and out. I like how the next attraction gives them extra cards as well so they can like trade them back. Oh. 
Can we take nine? Probably not. Yeah. As much as I would just like to have resolved um, the other there, probably could be up to anything. Now we'll just play Scorpion Wasp out like aggressively. Uh, we can play the new tomorrow here. Then what I'd like to do here is count on my fingers how many scouts I get. Because uh, that's going to help me to uh, figure out what I'm going to do with the scouts. So I've got four so far. Got five, so that's a nice average. All right, so we've got Winchester Merchant on top. We've got a power in hand that we will now keep. So Winchester Merchant is probably better than trying to gamble here. Um, because this is definitely an aid of the hero. Um, it's off TD, so you do have to like go through that repeatedly. Uh, but yeah, playing the Scorpion Wasp out means that we shouldn't be in too much trouble here. Like this is fine, we take free damage. Um Yep, yeah, got us. Now Nikto doesn't have um endurance because this isn't a crown deck. Uh but here we are, just get aid of the hero. Just like draw four, game four. Should be in relatively good shape. Um, then we just get to like strategize away this hailstorm. And then pay two to scout, which is sweet. Oh. Well, I guess we will keep hailstorm in case it's good later. But these your positions got like so few powers left in the deck. Uh, it's got crest fodder, it's sweet. Um, next thing we get to like 10 our opponent again. And strategize plus wisdom. Yeah, that should be enough to sort of find. There's a way of actually just winning the game like the turn after. Yeah, I mean our opponent was dead. <laughs> but uh yeah, there's a there were a good spot to let us get that far. But yeah, our opponent's deck was sweet there. I'm just gonna give him a little bit add there. Okay, on the draw game. And I suppose that last game sort of shows how well we're redrawing this just because there's no like card selection. Like four mana four four, mm, probably not. Gonna get us there with like one interactive spell. Uh, I suppose that last game shows us. Also here, this exact hand is where we're going to see how good position is. Because uh, it will fetch us the time source for the power stone. Um, and it'll get us nice and easily up to the Minotaur Ambassador. But yeah, the last game there shows that even though I feel like I've got a good grasp of the game and I can sort of figure out uh, what my opponent's up to. Uh, so I was probably on Feln here. Got a bunch of interactive spells and one harsh will probably fine. This could be fell control, could be fell beatdown. Either way, don't really want. Oh, perhaps I did want that. Well, yeah, there's my time source sorted. We'll permafrost this. Yeah, so this game and last game, I'm going to show you that perhaps you're not always perfectly correct in what your opponent's up to. Like the last game, I was thinking a lot differently um, because. I was pretty convinced that they were playing something wildly different. Um, I'm actually just going to petition here. Uh, we don't. It's going to get the crest of progress. Uh, so we've got double of everything. Um, which is merchant. We'll grab that for later because we are getting pretty close to the ten. Um, I can take two and a war cry here. That's perfectly fine. I've got like hailstorms in our deck, so we can deal with this. Okay. Well, Rindra makes me sort of. Want to have a power stone there, but oh, quick kit, nice. So we're going to be pretty well covered. Um, I think permafrost on the ranger's pro probably quite good. Um, yeah, probably just going to be unlike this spell to kill that. And then next turn, we'll just uh play the ambassador, gets us up to eight, and then we can probably merchant quite easily into a new tomorrow because we won't be too far away from it. Yep. You know what else? You can't sabotage Winchester Merchant. So I probably got the, the harsh rule off us, which is fine. This makes me sad for bottom in the original one, but we've got other rafts in the deck, so we're mostly fine. And if I probably wants to offer the trade next turn with the Minotaur Ambassador, I'm more than happy. Also, this is absolutely beautiful. So now this is going to push us up uh, to eight. I mean, I'm sort of tempted here just to petition for a undepleted power so that we can um, new tomorrow on curve. But I also wouldn't mind just like uh, holding up the equivocate. I'm greedy though. I'm just going to grab like basic primal sigil. 
Uh, grab the primal because we do have like this dude in the deck. Uh, this, uh, what's it called? Yeah, Minotaur Ambassador. I don't want to just fetch up all my uh, time and justice sources. I still want this to be a live draw. But hey, I'm happy to block whatever. Okay, so Perfrost is good for our opponent here. We do get to get us in for five, but with no... That's fine. I uh, do probably need a Wrath now. Okay, Aid of the Hero is good. So Crest here. Um, crest of Progress, uh, no thank you. This might be a slightly different game though. I'm actually going to fetch the Primal Sigil away to get the Great Parliament, just have a bunch of blockers. So the reason for that is that I don't believe we can actually take the turn off next turn just to play fingers because our opponent's deck is actually quite explosive. And uh, now we're actually feeling the bottom in the, uh, well, the second harsh rule that we would have had access to. But, so this could be like a rapid shot or something. Okay, well, we got to try and block this twice. Okay, so I don't feel like there's any fast effects there. Um, that seemed fine for us. Okay, well, Ridge is good here. Okay, well, we've still got the Scorpion Wasp. So I get strategize on. Um, okay, well, we can get an aid of the hero whenever we want it because we do have the Winchest Merchant. Okay, more Scorpion Wasps is good. Um, I'm probably just going to equivocate this. So I should just equivocate both the things to make our opponent spend a turn. Sort stuff out. Yeah, I don't feel too bad about taking a turn off this way. As we do have another Scorpion Wasp coming up. We'll get a new tomorrow. Bash for four. Like, what can sabotage us here and just, like, do a lot of horrendous work against us? But them keeping the Nightfall triggers is sort of fine. <laughs> uh, well, that got upgraded. But... Oh, end of the story. Um, there's no way we can kill any of our things, so we can't actually end the story very well. But let's do speed tomorrow. So I'm probably going to make as many trades as possible. I've probably got like some sort of unknown. Um, I've actually not paid attention to how many scouts we've got here. And I've got at least two. I think we might just be keeping end of the story on top anyway. Um... Yeah, I think we'll do that just because we've effectively got like uh, five power left in the deck. Oh, we've got market one. Yeah, market ones. We've got four power left in the deck, so all of our draws are basically live for quite a while here. Okay, so I think we're just in the stay alive portion of the game. So I'm interesting not to attack there. Let's petition, uh, grab a scout. And now we get to try and find a win condition. Wisdom and Elders will do it. And then I probably shouldn't have like any sort of ambush threats or charge at least. So we should be pretty well protected with the Scorpion Wasp. Like Twilight Wasp Raptors are uh, fine and all that. But we're just going to be Wisdom in. Just keep the cards going. Okay, so, good. <laughs> I'm so tempted to like, just play that, just to, yeah, let's just block it. Uh, if our opponent wants to rapid shot, then we'll just equivocate. I'd actually prefer to have end of story in hand though. Uh, just if our opponent just play like a Rindra here or something, I'd just much rather just be able to deal with it. I think I'm gonna keep the power stone in hand. Uh, we've got enough power that if we do draw like a great parman, I would play it. So actually, yeah, we needed 24 to get the boost anyway. But I put us dead to this, so don't matter. Got 20 pound in the air, points at 16. Yeah, this deck's sweet. Oh. Okay, so 
<laughs> We've got a lot of scouts in this hand. Uh, we're on the play with a harsh rule though, so maybe it's okay. I'm going to keep it. Um, the thing with these greedy control decks is that the not matter how well you play. You'll get there eventually. I'm just going to play Crest and Great Palms probably good. If we need a 4 power 4 4, we've got one. Uh, yeah, let's just keep Crest him, I guess. Uh, Eight of the heroes probably slightly more aggressive, <laughs> so we'll bottom that one. Uh, we do have access to one more in the board at least. So if we do get to the 12 power, usually you win just off the first resolution. Okay, a fair Xeon in deck. Okay, please just don't have infinite like interactive spells with me. Just let me get this harsh rule off. So, Crescent away. Uh, Minotaur Ambassador is probably going to be good. Because we can play that into the Great Palmer turn after just get two owls. Like, taking one's fine. I'm not dying to this. Also, our opponent does, like, go deep here. Uh, so Power Stone doesn't help us next turn. Yeah, so let's bottom that. Um, it's nice to have a two drop to play after you've Minotaur Ambassadored. Oh. Well, our opponent has got stuck on power, so we'll call it not a game. I'll just, like, do an additional one. But I'm not going it out. It's a pain in the ass to edit. Okay, well, I do like this hand. Uh, we've got all it to four power, pretty much guaranteed. So, we'll keep it. We've got strategize, equivocate to buy us some time. We've got partial as well. Uh, I do like how much time equivocate does buy for usually. Okay, well, we're playing against Ricardo, and we've got an aid of the hero in hand, so. Well, because we've got the basic time schedule as well, if we do drop power stone, I'm sort of happy to play Crest Varda first. Uh, great Parliament. Does buy you a bunch of time. Because uh, it's a 4 4, so we'll keep it. I think next time we're going to set up with a petition, maybe. Okay, well, Bullet Shape has already done its work. So is that probably just like cascading out some frets here? Yep, okay, Bullet Shape it into Bullet Shaper. Well, we probably want to equivocate the other one, do we? Now, we can wait turn because the things that they do that actually matters, uh, like, would be on three or five. Yeah, so if they just like ramp out a Mali next turn, I'm just like, sure, <laughs> that's okay. Well, let's crest it up. Yeah, I'll keep it over crest progress, that's fine. Is it just going to stay there forever? Yep, yeah, okay. So I'm going to make a 4 drop here, or a 5 potentially, yeah. Okay, just rise to the challenge is fine. Like, if you came to Dirdle, you know, you're in the right place. Do we to smash us for 4, so we're under like quite a bit of pressure here. But between like Equivocate and Great Parliament, we should be able to protect ourselves quite well. I'm not sure what it'd be rising for here. Uh, I guess it's Risen, which just gets swept up with Harsh Rule. If it's a carry, we can hang fire in our Equivocate. And just take some damage and just try and uh, set ourselves behind that. Well, I suppose we'll crest see what we find first. Let's go up and Mosby's great. Um, we'll grab the. Do we need to be up on five on time? Doesn't really matter. We can crest next turn and play the Scorpion Wasp. Like, whenever we need to. Um, I've got to assume our process not just got like a Rune Hammer. Okay, just go for a 6 4 Marley. Yeah, that's pretty fair. Um, I suppose we'd actually just want the power there. Considering that's what they've risen for, and they've not got like... Oh, okay. Um, this deck isn't going to be playing. I was happy to take some damage here. Yeah, quick get this just to pop the thing. Uh, see what the fast effect is. It's like Torch. If we get to resolve this harsh rule, um, they don't get to like protect their Marley, then we should be in good shape. So they do have a fast effect. I'm going to guess this isn't protect because protect is really our favor right now. Yeah, so we need to be mindful that our opponent has a torch. Uh, so we're only really at four. So we can't get too aggressive. 
Also, we need to be mindful here that um, I could have just fetched up like uh, a carrier. Oh, they could have a, a carrier in hand, sorry, that they can now play. Okay, so. This is like a game for later. We are quite a way away from actually, though. Let's bottom this, crest it up. Our wisdom's good. We are dead to Ikaria. Yeah, there's nothing we can do that because if we hail, <coughs> if we hail some, I should have gone to one, and they've got a torch in hand. So I'm just gonna prove myself right, I guess. Yeah. So they do have the torch here. Um, should we torch it? Us. Yeah. Yeah. So that bites, but. I suppose that's just the breaks of playing a daily control deck. Like sometimes you'll just be dead to the carrier. And we did take quite a bit of a beating in the early game. So, well, on to the next game. Okay, I uh, do like this hand. It's got the ability to cast Wisdom Elders like through a power stone on turn three, even though we played complete power. Yeah, that's probably fine. Got like a permafrost if we really need it, so if our opponent just like plays a teacher or like an own run not gonna answer for a little bit, probably will be happy just to pop that, but basic primal sigil, I'm fine, I'm happy. Uh could be Skycrag actually, but I do Yeah, we've got time sigil, doesn't matter what we play next. But a crest, do prefer to lean on the primal crests. Uh just because we do have spells like Wisdom of the Elders that is generally quite timely to play. Okay, so this does fell, that's fine. So what we get to do here is cool with the Power Stone actually because we get to play the Power Stone. Next turn we get to play Crest of Wisdom, means we get to scout one and we get to play Wisdom the Elders in the same turn. So that's uh, quite effective if you ask me. Okay, so given our opponent has played the Amethyst Waystone, um, Problem Merchant is sort of fair game. That's what you would expect. But that's telling me that perhaps they are actually playing the... Uh, we'll keep the petition. Just good, just to have the scouts. Uh, we'll be at five next turn, so we can play the two plus the three. Yep, this is fine. Uh, but this is telling us that our point is playing like the Fallon Berserk deck. Um, the fast effect there is nice because if our point knows our deck, they know that we do play Wasp. And uh, now, if we played the Wizard is out, you know, maybe they give us a little bit of leeway here. I think that we've. Uh, not got uh, any sort of nonsense like that. I feel like I'm still grabbing a. A crest here though. I mean we do only need double of everything, so don't really need to. Um cost of opponent does anything silly. Could like a gate, but probably not going to need to actually. Just give that fast spell up. Next time we can just block this with the Winchester merchant we need to. I think we're maybe gonna aggressively get a new tomorrow, just because we can really. Yeah, well, there's an Aiden here, which is like our payoff. Uh, let's crest it up. Mercer Ambassador is perfect. That'll get us where we need to be. Well, we don't need infinite permafrost, so let's just get a new tomorrow. Crest this up. And I think we will get a basic sigil here, but it's going to be primal. Uh, this, just because this will get us to 10 with like out any issue. And then after the 10, we're going to get to 20, and then we'll just get to play this and win the game. So I brought us boshed our dude with permafrost, which is going to bite. But next time we're going to play a 3 5. That should probably wrap it up. Uh, we'll also have 3 power up, so if we really need to, we can like permafrost this and then hold up a quick okay. Um, going to assume. Actually, can our opponent kill us from here? Uh, if they have like rapid shot, rapid shot, berserk, plus like permafrost, I'm not gonna take the risk. Let's just pop this Aegis. Next turn it sets up for like a end of the story if we really need to. Uh, this lets us have the equivocate if we actually need it. So I've also got something. So this is like Death Strike, isn't it? Yeah, Death Strike. So Death Strike this turn, and then next turn they get to try and go all in. Maybe that was a time to equivocate just because it buys us time. Uh, because we don't want to get unsealed, but unseal is two power, so rapid shot puts this to seven, which makes it 14 plus the one spell. Yeah, 
if our opponent can kill us, well done to them. Like they deserve the points. But okay, so they've got power as well. So that sort of bites. Uh, yeah, just take three. It's fine. Probably going to equivocate into turn so that we can new tomorrow in peace. Yeah, let's just bash this. They do get another hit of the merchant because of the face ages, which is of course gonna bite because it means it gets a tutor again. And with them drawing like Turks Childs with the Wisdom Elders. Also they can't play it, should run that end of turn rather than when the Wisdom Elders was. Probably not gonna matter. We have just like refreshed our opponent's ages for no reason. But that don't matter. Um we're just gonna new tomorrow. Maybe this was just actually the brain genius thing to do, because it means our opponent doesn't unseal our uh, new tomorrow. Who knows? All I know is that next turn I'm casting Age of the Hero. Whether or not it resolves, probably don't care. I also got like, wasn't counting, but was that like 10 for 10 on scouts? Uh, Winchester Merchants, another copy of Age of the Hero, so I'm going to keep that. I'm going to keep this another eight times, probably. I wish it was like a hot key just to like say yes, keep it forever. Yeah, that's the sort of difficulty that comes in when you're trying to commentate on a game at the same time as actually playing. So that sometimes you. Ha! <laughs> Got you. So I promise Rain of Frogs to those, which. I'm gonna do very low. Because now I suppose we're just like. Oh, okay, they've gone for the removal spell, which is fair, really. My opponent doesn't care, we're just gonna like draw four cards. Absolute villain. Well, draw four. Uh, I don't guess play million power. Mm. Well, let's pull the power stone away. Like grab another raid of the hero. Like, play the frog for good measure. Ribbit. <laughs> so I mean, like, when you play the sort of control, like, don't have to play perfectly. Because what your big game is, if your opponent lets you do it, is just so big, it just doesn't matter. Like, our opponent's going for the mirror image here. But what I'm going to do is Hailstorm to pop their Aegises. And then I'm going to Aid of the Hero. Which I think kills our opponent. Uh, I don't actually count how many we've got. We've got 28, yeah. I'll do it. It's not rocket science, it's just big control. It'll be MMO right at the last minute. But yeah, let's go on to the last game. I'm doing the bonus one because one of the games wasn't really a game. Okay, so here on the play. Uh, this hand is probably a little bit ropey. Uh, we do get up to three. Strategize can help us, probably going to ditch this, aid of the hero, and if it gets a six, we're in good shape. But I think this is actually just a redraw, just because if we don't find a time source, it can be in rough shape. Uh, this hand does need a second primal source, but with the crest and like petitions in our deck. Okay, we'll keep this crest. Uh, effectively the same as bottom in it, I guess, but also helps us to try and find. Whilst also being power, because we are like a power hungry deck, so. I'm happy just to sit here cresting away. Crest Wisdom's perfect. Like, obviously, you got slightly punished for uh, keeping that crest on top. Because we would have been able to Wisdom this turn, but that uh, doesn't really matter. We get to Wisdom next turn, so probably just do. Uh, additional Justice Sigil. I will bottom that because we do have a Minotaur Ambassador's Curve into. I don't want to risk just like drawing all my Justice and just like losing value. This dude is as impressive as his spectacles are, a lot less impressive when it's just like fetch up one power. We play the mirror. I, I hope we're playing the mirror because I would be in heaven. Um, I'm just like, opponent negate this with unseal or backlash if that's what they've got. So I will fire this off in their turn. A lot of the time, fast spell doesn't mean that spell has to be fast. Okay, well, this is perfect. Uh, we'll just get to like go crest ham. So Quivocate is probably, well, I probably not developed like any sort of threats here, so we're probably okay. Um, so next turn we get to strategize anyway. Yeah, it's position anyway. 
Uh, grab a Crest of Honor just because I like it. It's got really pretty artwork. Also, it's like one of my favorite cards from set four. Just being able to play Huru again. But sadly, we've not actually played much with Huru on Nostrix Parter, where maybe we should have done. But let's fire off this dude. And we get to strategize as well, which is pretty sweet. Probably I'm just going to bottom this uh, time sigil because we can fetch it up anyway with the Minotaur Ambassador. So it's just like good value. Uh, this gets us all the way up to like uh, 12 anyway, just like naturally. Yeah, so we play the mirror there. End of the story is telling me that our opponents are playing some sort of like temporal deck. Oh boy, it's like temporal with this on top of your deck must just be ridiculous. I'm not sure if temporal means it has to be in your hand, but. So, it's just good deck building. So we do have to be concerned for like our opponents like wrath effects. I think I'm just gonna wisdom here though. Now, casual is likely rubbish, uh, but we do want some sort of reset button against our opponents like aid of the heroes and stuff like that. Um, actually, we'll keep equivocate and casual. Let's bosh off the permafrost. Like, pass the turn. But as you can see, we're going to like 12 next turn. I mean, we're not just firing off Age of the Hero. Um, don't need to do our draw for. Just hit our point. Oh, okay. We're drawing 100 play power. We are hitting that. Rats. Well, I've been a little bit greedy fetching these uh, crests every time. Well, Wizmills is great. So our opponent has been through one harsh with one of the story. I didn't see if end of story. Oh, okay. Our opponent is aggressive here. Well, I was going to gain four lives. Yeah, we're not going to get our opponent with wasps. So let's just like have something in play that can attack them for one. There we go. Probably just going to be getting a big giant metal dongle with the Winchester Merchant. I suppose this is the exact matchup. Well, Hailstorm can get out of here. I suppose this is the exact matchup that you do want, like Sword of the Sky King for. Because uh, that way we get to crack our opponent for 8 in the chops. But our opponent just hates us. <laughs> this is, must be a very different build. Um, I did try a build with Channel Tempest and the Minotaur Ambassadors before. But I suppose here we go. Probably never really need Permafrost. Let's just grab Donga. Bosh him. That's like have him dead in the air. Yeah, I think we're just going to play the crest out. We're going to hold up Equivocate if our opponent... Oh, eight of the go. Eight of the hero, nice. If our opponent does like try and kill one of our things, I'll just like Equivocate just to keep having threats, I guess. Because I'm going to suspect that Equivocate is not going to do anything against our opponent. But we could play a blocker, which because we get to Equivocate that and then kill him with the dong. Like, this is just like my favourite card. It's like... It's like how generic and big can you get for a legendary? It's like eight, eight, three. On my face, just can't interact with it. Uh, I probably could have like a merchant that's like Omnivore story to this, which isn't like the end of the world because if they spend all that power doing that, they are dead to whatever. Um, actually, I'm not going to equivocate. I mean, I suspect our opponent's not got like some random two drop they're going to block this with. Well, well, three drop now. Could be a merchant, in which case. Okay, so our opponent's like. Make a move. Scorpion Wasp! Yeah, got me. Yeah. Well, we just get to Ada there, don't we? I mean, I suspect our opponent's just like pretty dead to this, like the 8 11. Uh, I probably might run out of uh, good channels. Yeah. Well, we are probably dead in like multiple ways. Okay. You do have units. This must be a different build of this deck. Like, for sure, if it's got like the Time Merchant. Oh, destruction. Sure. Got no way to save it. So now the fight is on. Uh, do we have just we don't have destruction or access to anything like that? Sure. Not quite getting that. I'm just gonna try to like, kill our opponent. Probably want to overextend too wildly. Might just like Minotaur Ambassador next turn. Just like double Ambassador. 
Hopefully I get to chuck our opponents to free with this. Okay, well we've got like plenty of frets here, so probably just gonna be able to grind our opponent out. My opponent just like keeps one for one and our things that like drew us a million cards. Uh, I mean we can equivocate this, but they just get to do it again. That's fine. Yeah. We can ambassador just go up and power a little bit. We played a power for turn, I believe we have. It was fetching up anyway. This doesn't actually give us an additional owl, so it doesn't matter, but we should now be pretty well insulated if our opponent does have uh, their own like aid of the hero, because uh, we can just stun theirs and draw four, but yeah, so there's a lot of a lot of play here. I think I might actually be at the point where I will equivocate one of my frets just to keep fret heavy. Because like random, these cost four, yeah, well random four drops long enough to do the job, five point just like sweep the board here. I think it's very likely that they will just run out of removal though. If they're like one for one in our make five dudes. Yeah, I probably agrees. Uh but we've got the upper hand in the control mirror. I suppose that's just what happens, but yeah, let's get to that deck tech. Oh yeah, level up. Okay, so that was my hot hot take. On Klozu's ramp deck, you could say that now I own the deck because I changed uh, more than one card in it. But no, <laughs> Klozu's deck was pretty sweet. And I'm glad that it actually brought me back to this archetype because I do like these big control decks that are just winning with stuff like Donga and Aid of the Hero. I think the end of the story as well, just being like sometimes a harsh rule that's like harsh rule draw a card because it is unlikely we do get the tribute. Uh, of course, just Makto in any artwork is something I'm happy with. I do really like this character. Even though I spent a long time not realising that he was the bad guy, it took until the campaign to figure that out. But oh, well, yeah, this deck was sweet. Uh, shout out to Glozu and like congrats for getting into the top eight, actually. Um, we'll link to this version of the deck in the description, but I will also link to the original version of the deck just so you're able to find it. But yeah, deck was sweet. Uh, thanks for watching. I've been That Resolves, and this was Big Boy Dongo Ramp. First one of the day for sweet decks well.